Today is Ash Wednesday. This evening, we gather with Christians across the world to mark the beginning of the holy season of Lent. God calls us to repentance, to bring our sins and burdens before God, and to ask God's healing and forgiveness. What have you to bring? What do you ask forgiveness for? What in you needs the healing of Jesus Christ? In stillness, we come into the presence of the God who is always forgiving, always merciful, always compassionate, always loving. Uh, Lord, as we begin this holy season of Lent, may we turn back to you with all our hearts in prayer in fasting and in giving alms to the poor that our sins be forgiven and our hearts mended through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our hymn is Jesus, the very thought of thee. reading from the prophet Joel. It is the Lord who speaks. Come back to me with all your heart, fasting, weeping, mourning. Let your hearts be broken, not your garments torn. Turn to the Lord, your God, again. For he is all tenderness and compassion slow to anger, rich in graciousness, and ready to relent. Sound the trumpet in Zion. Order a fast. Proclaim a solemn assembly. 
Call the people together. Summon the community. Assemble the elders. Gather the children, even the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his bedroom and the bride her alcove. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord lament. Let them say, spare your people, Lord. Then the Lord jealous on behalf of his land took pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Now I hold my head in shame I'm so tired of pretending All of my sin I resign War on this heart The sweet saving fire to refine I'm empty and broken, Lord, and all that I have is yours. Recounting the cost, I'll carry this crawl, cause I, mm, I'm empty, I'm empty and broken, Lord. How could I be unfaithful to one who's so divine? You bear a cross for a fool with blinded eyes. Oh, needing your grace so amazing, salvation you your kindness leads to repentance you deserve. I'm, I'm empty, empty and broken, Lord, and, and all that I have is yours. Recounting the cost. I'll carry this cross cause I, I'm empty, I'm empty and broken, Lord. I still can't believe in my weakness, I turned away from you. Somehow not so surprising, you already knew. I'm empty and broken, Lord, and all that I have is yours. Recounting the cost, I'll carry this cross, cause I I'm empty and broken, Lord. Mm -hmm. I'm broken, Lord. Have mercy on me, God, in your kindness. And your compassion blot out my offense. 
O oh, wash me more and more from my guilt and cleanse me from my sin. Have mercy on us, O oh Lord, for we, we have, have sinned. We have sinned. My offenses, truly I know them. My sin is always before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned. What is evil in your sight I have done. Have mercy on us. Have mercy upon us, Lord. For we, for have, we sinned. have sinned. A pure heart create for me, O God. Put a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not deprive me of your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. Give me again the joy of your help. With a spirit of fervor, sustain me. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Beware of practicing your righteousness before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look somber like the hypocrites, for they mark their faces to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. I'm Cheryl Frank. I am honored to be the associate pastor at Greece Baptist Church. Thank you to each and every one of you for worshiping with us tonight. At Greece Baptist, during each worship service, we acknowledge the lands on which we worship. For those of us in this part of New York State, we acknowledge with respect the Seneca Nation of the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, whose ancestral lands the town of Greece and the city of Rochester now occupy. We encourage every member of our community to learn about the original inhabitants of this land. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. In just a few moments, one of the pastors is going to say, remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. And we're going to make the mark of the cross on our foreheads. So even though I have been observing Ash Wednesday since I was a child in the Missouri Synod Lutheran Church in Racine, Wisconsin, these words never really hit me until the Ash Wednesday when I was 36 years old. As soon as Pastor Ken Williams put the ashes on my head, I suddenly realized that I am not immortal. Until then, I think I had this youthful invincibility. I thought I could do anything. But when he said, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return, I felt my heart melt away inside my chest. The invincibility left, and I became keenly aware that one day I would die. It was later that year that I received my call to ministry, but that is a story for another time. Now today in 2023, rather than being sad that I'm not immortal, I now count it as a great blessing that my body will turn to dust when I die. You see, unless it goes into a coffin, it will eventually become part of the dirt 
that nurtures flowers and vegetables and trees and plants. It will return to Mother Earth, to nature, and become part of the cycle of life, of God's creation. So we are all putting ashes on our head tonight. Pretty, huh? Nice fashion statement. Some of us may have had ashes imposed earlier in the day, which means all day long we go out showing people that we are returning to dust. We are showing our repentance, humility, and mortality all day long. Rather than wearing the newest clothes, the latest hairstyles, driving the fanciest cars, hanging out with the best people, those of us who wear ashes show our humility and connection to nature. And what if that was our boasting point? What if our boasting point was how few resources we use in order to live? How simple our lifestyle is? How much joy we get from the people and animals and trees and flowers that we encounter in our everyday lives. How little we contribute to climate change. How little we contribute to plastic pollution. I was fortunate to take a trip with my conservatory in high school to Europe, including the Netherlands. And in the Netherlands, for transportation, people ride bikes as a first choice then maybe take public transportation and only take cars as a last resort. Rather than showing off who has the best, fanciest, fastest new bike, they take pride in who has the oldest, dirtiest bike because they know that buying a new bike uses more resources than continuing to use an old one. An old bike is a status symbol. People take pride in caring for the earth to which they will one day return. This week, my daughter Joanna is on a high school trip to Germany. She tells me that in the city parks, sometimes there's a tree growing right in the middle of the path. And that's because the people do not cut down the tree if it grows in the path, they let the tree grow. And they expand the path so people can walk around the tree. The people know that we are part of nature and that the nature will continue to be there after we are gone so they respect it and preserve it for the next generation. Today, practically nothing remains of the items that Jesus used every day. But even after I die, every plastic spoon and fork and takeout container and plastic bag and piece of plastic packaging will continue to live on 2000 years from now. And there is part of my body that will still exist that does not exist from the bodies of those who died in Jesus' day. That is, the microplastics in my body will still be there, even after every bone and hair has decayed. In Genesis 3, verse 19, God says to Adam, for you are dust and to dust you shall return. God reminds us that we are part of mother nature. We are part of the earth. For most of history, we will not be here. Therefore, we should enjoy the time we are here and care for the earth for those who come after us so that they are not stuck tripping over our garbage. This past Sunday was Scout Sunday at our church. Pastor Steve had us play a video of a Boy Scout leader addressing the scouts from the International Space Station. He said that astronauts spend one third of their time taking care of their spaceship. Therefore, wouldn't it be appropriate if each one of us spent a third of our time taking care of the Earth, which from space looks like a tiny spaceship in a vast dark void? Can you imagine what the world would be like if everyone spent a third of our time caring for the Earth? Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you that your son Jesus spent so much time outdoors preaching about agriculture and vineyards and the lilies of the field and the birds of the air. And we thank you that the wind and the sea obeyed him. But now 2000 years later on this Ash Wednesday, we find ourselves living in a culture where destroying the earth is normalized and it takes a great deal of effort to not pollute your amazing creation. We are so sorry. 
Please show us a way forward and guide us, the followers of Jesus, to be leaders in the protection of creation, so that when we die, even as our spirits live on, our bodies and every resource we use to live in your beautiful world can actually return to dust, supporting new life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Traditionally, you would be invited to receive on your forehead the sign of the cross made from ashes, the ashes of our sins that have been burned away by God's forgiving grace. Ashes are also an ancient symbol of our human frailty and mortality, just as Cheryl shared. But the ashes that we use for Ash Wednesday are also mixed with oil. And that's the biblical symbol of healing and divine calling. Oil was poured into wounds to heal them, and oil was poured on the heads of people that God was calling into the lives of service on behalf of God's people. The mixing of oil and ashes is a reminder that God goes to work most powerfully in those places where we need healing, forgiveness, and release. And we are anointed to minister and serve because we are filled with the power of God's grace working in our lives. Hear these words from second, or 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 8. He raises up the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes and inherit a seat of honor. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and on them he set the world. I'm going to invite you now with me to use your thumb and symbolically, as we don't have the ashes with us this evening, to place the, the sign of the cross on your head and hear these words. From dust you were created, to dust you shall return. Repent and believe in the good news.
So as we begin this season of Lent, let us pray for ourselves and for the whole world that all people may come back to God, repenting their sins and seeking his forgiveness. As we offer these prayers, that your response as the congregation to each of our petitions will be, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray that we all hear God's call this Lent to come back to God, asking God's mercy and forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray that when we lose confidence in ourselves and others and in God, we may be blessed with the gift of faith. Lord, have mercy. mercy. Let us pray that when we are tempted to despair, we may find hope. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray that when our hearts are filled with anger and resentment, we may find compassion and love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. As we forgive those who sin against us, let us ask for God's mercy in the words that Jesus taught us. Join with me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn this evening is called Ashes, written by Tom Conroy. I'm going to play a video of this hymn that displays the lyrics and invite you to sing along with the lyrics, if you will. Just keep your microphones muted at home as you sing, and let's sing together, Ashes. Let us pray. Lord, through our observance of Lent, help us to understand the meaning of your son's death and resurrection and teach us to reflect it in our lives through Christ our Lord. Amen. Go out marked with the ashes of repentance. Go out marked by faith in God's mercy. Go out marked by hope in God's forgiveness, and go out marked by love for all God's people. Thanks be to God. God.